and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we're taking a look at the new stamp set, A Creature Was Stirring. This stamp set features some cute little mice that match a lot of the mice we've seen in some previous stamp sets, but these little mice are dressed up to do some baking for the holidays. They have their little aprons and oven mitts and chef's hat on so they can bake some goodies for the holidays. This stamp set is also designed to coordinate with the magic picture changer which I'll show you in one of my card designs in the video today. There is coordinating dies to go with the set that cut out all these little images and there's even a little die that cuts out a slit in the bowl so that the spoon or the whisk can slip inside which I'll show you in my card as well. So for my first card, I'm going to be creating a landscape card using the four square backdrop. And I've already colored and cut out all my little images that I'm going to use to create these four little scenes on my card. So I'm going to be using a lot of the images from the set. So I have my die here and I'm going to cut some colored cardstock. I'm going to start with some peacock for my frame and then also some mermaid. And these are going to be the little panels that go inside. And this is where I'm going to create all my little scenes for this card. I'm also going to use some of the Snow Day Remix paper from last year. And I'm going to pick out one of these red pattern papers. And I'm going to cut two of these rectangles with that. And then I'm just going to trim them down. And that's going to be the little ground for each of these little panels. So I'm just cutting them straight across. You could also use a die to cut this if you wanted a shape, but I'm gonna have a lot of stuff going on in each of these panels, so you're not really going to see the edge of this too terribly much. I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down to my panels, and I'm gonna glue them right along the bottom. So I'm just going to do the same thing to all four panels so that they all match. And now that I have all those panels done as far as the background goes, I'm going to go ahead and put my frame on my card so that as I create each of these little panels, I can just glue that down to my card right inside the frame as well. So I've just put a line of liquid glue all around this frame and I'm just going to glue it directly to a card base. And I'm using the edge of my desk to make sure that the top is lined up with the top of my card base perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and put this little panel in the hole so that's going to drop right inside that hole that the die cut. And then I'm going to start to decorate my card. So for my first little panel here, I'm putting that little bunt cake on top of the cake stand. And I'm adding a little bit of holly to the top of it. And then it's going to go in a panel with this little mouse with the chef's hat on. So I'm going to add some foam squares so I can have some dimension. And I'm just going to pop each of these little images into my little frame here. And then I'm also going to add that little candy cane just for some extra little elements in this scene. So now for my second panel here, I'm going to put the gingerbread house and I'm going to add it to the little plate that comes in this set. It also looks really cute on the cake stand. And then I'm going to add the little guy here with his oven mitts on, which I just think is so cute. So I decided to go ahead and pop up all these little images on some foam so that I have consistency between all the panels. So the main images in each one will have some dimension off that background. And then I'm just going to add the little cookies. So I love that there's a little mouse gingerbread cookie. I just think that's so cute. And then there's a regular gingerbread and then I'm adding another one of those candy canes. So my third little scene is going to be up here in the top right. And I'm going to use that third mouse. So there's three mice in this set. And for this one, I'm going to use the die that cuts the slit in the bowl. So the bowl is cut out just like this. But then there is a die in this set that 
cuts just a curved line. And that's gonna cut a slit in the bowl so that when you take the whisk or the spoon, you can actually slide it in there and it looks like it's in the bowl. So you just wanna line that up with the front lip of the bowl. And I'm just gonna hold it in place with a little bit of tape and run it through my die cut machine. And then now you can see that there's a slot cut there and the spoon or the whisk will fit in there perfectly like you're stirring up the cookies or the cake batter. So I'm gonna put some foam dots on the back of my little mouse here to pop her up. And then to hold the spoon in place, I'm just putting a tiny little bit of washi tape and then I'll put a foam square on the back of the bowl as well. So I'm making sure that it's placed in such a way that she can reach up and stir that spoon. And then of course, I'll just fill that panel by decorating with some more of the little elements. So there's the little cookie that's shaped like a Christmas tree. And I have another one of those candy canes. There's two candy canes in this set. And I'll just fill that scene up with those. And then there's a little stamp in here, excuse my head, that says stir, which I just think is so cute. So I'm gonna stamp that around kind of insinuating the action that she is stirring the bowl of mix there. So it just says stir, stir, stir. Now I'm adding some of those Christmas tree cookies to that big baking pan. And I'm adding them kind of scrunched up to the left side of my pan because this is going to go off the side of my panel and then I'm just gonna trim it off. But I still wanna see those three cookies. So I've just got them really tight to each other so they'll all fit on there. And then I'm just going to trim off the piece that overhangs. And this panel is where I'm going to put my sentiment. So I've got a whisk and a spoon here. And these are going to look like they're hanging from the top of the panel. Like they're hanging up on the baker's rack. And then I want to stamp my sentiment above that sheet of cookies. So I've just laid those there as a placeholder. And I'm gonna start at the bottom with my sentiment. I'm stamping out the word Christmas. And then I'm gonna stamp the one that says a joyful. And then I wanted it to say we whisk you, but it kind of was too long for this panel. So I'm just going to stamp the word have. So it says have a joyful Christmas. And unlike the other panels, I'm decorating this one before I glue it to the card so that I can trim off the pieces that overhang. So I trimmed off that baking sheet, and then I'm also going to trim off the tops of the whisk and the spoon. And then now I can add that to my card base just like the other panels. And now to finish it off, I'm adding some stickles glitter. This is Stardust Stickles, which is my favorite because it's clear and it, you can see the color below it. And it just adds some sparkle and shine. So I added it to the cookies and to the top of the gingerbread house. And I'm following that wavy line on that bunk cake. And I'm just adding a little bit of sparkle, just a little bit to each panel. And then here is my finished card, which I just think is so adorable with those little mice baking all those goodies. So for my second card today, I'm going to be pairing the A Creature With Stirring set with the Baked With Love set. This set has some great baking images that are perfect with pairing with these new little mice. I'm also going to be using some of the Let It Shine papers. So I'm picking out that pink stripe and that's going to be my background. And then that dark teal with the little dot is going to be the base for my little critters to stand on and my goodies. I guess it could be like a tabletop, but I'm going to go ahead and stamp the second part of my sentiment at the bottom. So excuse my head. And that's just so I can see my spacing. I'm going to put the first part of it on that sentiment banner and I actually didn't end up using that sentiment banner, but I used 
a wavy one that was a little more simple. Um, and then that gives me a placement on where to cut this simple stitch hillside for the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and put this stitch rectangle that I cut. That's my background. I'm going to go ahead and put that on a card base. So that's with the largest outside in stitch rectangle. So it makes that nice white border around the edge. And then I'm going to adhere down the dark teal that I cut. So again, I've already colored and cut out all my images for this card. And they're in that little bowl there. And then I can just start to assemble my little scenes. So I'm using the larger cake stand that is in Baked with Love along with the smaller cake stand. And I thought this gave a nice difference in height and you can make these little compositions of the cake stands with the goodies on top. So I put the gingerbread house on that taller one and then I'm adding the little bunk cake to the shorter one and I'm adding that holly to the top. I really think just adding this holly to the top really makes it look festive. And this gingerbread house is kind of going to be the center. So I'm going to start there with my layout and putting my pieces down. And I've just glued that directly to the background. And then I'm going to use some foam squares for some of these elements that are going to be in front of that. So I'm adding a foam square to the back of the little bunt cake on the tiny stand. And then I'm using that curved die to cut out a slit in this bowl. Now this bowl is not the bowl in A Creature Was Stirring. This is the bowl from Baked With Love. So it's not exact, but it works well, just as well to fit that little whisk in there. And then I'm just gonna put some thin foam squares on the back of that bowl and get it placed where I want it. And then I'm also using the stick of butter, which is also from Baked With Love. I'm adding some foam squares to that. And my little mouse is going to stand on the butter so that she can reach the whisk to stir up what's ever in the bowl, which I just think is so funny. So you can see that that whisk fits in that slit perfectly that I cut with the die. And I'm just going to add a little bit of glue so that it stays in place. And I cut a little foam square for the handle. And now I can add the smaller bowl. So the smaller bowl comes from A Creature With Stirring. So you can see how these two sets together, you get some different sizes of things and you can really make a nice full scene with different size bowls and different size cake stands, which I just think is so much fun. So I'm going to make it look like he's holding the spoon. And then I'm going to add the little eggs in front of the bowl. So the eggs are also from Baked with Love. And I just think it's so fun that we have these other elements and we can get all these different looks by combining these two sets. And then finally I'm going to add the little shaker. I was going to make him hold it, but it looked a little funny with his oven mitts on. So I decided just to add it behind him. So now for the rest of my sentiment that says not a creature was stirring and I'm going to white emboss that onto this wavy banner that I've cut from guava cardstock and you can see it's a different one than the one I had before the folded one and that's just because the length of the stamp fit on this a lot better. It was way too close to the folded edges of the other one for my taste and so I just changed it up and decided to use this simple wavy banner. So I just stamped that down with some clear embossing ink, added some white embossing powder, and now I'm just heating it up with my heat tool till it's all nice and melted and bright white. So I'm just going to add some foam squares to the back of that as well so that it pops up off my background a little bit and matches the elements below it. And I'll just line that up towards the top. And then finally I'm going to add some of those stardust stickles again to add some glitter. I just think it looks like shimmery sprinkles onto these goodies. So I added some to my gingerbread house. I'm going to add some to the holly. 
on my little bundt cake here and then I'm also going to add it to that shaker so it looks like it's full of that glittery sprinkles that was added to all these treats. And then finally, because I just think the little stamp that says stir is so cute, I added the little stir stamp to the whisk beside that little mouse. And here's my finished card, which I just think is so adorable. My mom would be so proud. She's the baker in the family, and she loves mice. So now we're going to make a magic picture changer, and we're going to use the A Creature With Stirring along with the new magic picture changer oven add-on die. So I'm going to show you the pieces to that die in just a minute, but first I'm going to go ahead and stamp my images. So like I said before, this stamp set is designed to work with the magic picture changer and look like an oven. So we're going to stamp the cookie sheet in that square that I traced so that we know it's going to be in our opening where we're going to see the picture. So I'm stamping all my images out in jet black ink so that I can do some Copic coloring when I'm all done. And now that I've stamped out that cookie sheet, this piece is going to be the first image we see. So I'm going to stamp out three of the little balls of cookie dough. So these are the cookies when they first get put into the oven. Next on the other piece that's going to be the inside of the magic picture changer, I'm going to stamp that cookie sheet down about in the same place in that square that I've traced. And then I'm going to stamp the cookies that are flattened out. So these are the cookies after they've been in the oven and they've baked for a little while. So now that I have that all stamped down, I can just color my images and I'm just coloring with some simple Copic coloring, a little bit of shading around the edge of that pan. And then I'm gonna go in with a slightly lighter gray for the rest of the pan. And then I'm gonna do the same on the other pan as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm coloring my cookie dough. I used a lighter brown for the uncooked cookies, and then I'm gonna use a darker brown for the baked ones. So now it's time to color the inside of my oven, and I decided to go with this sort of taupey brown color for mine. It would be fun to color it in some bright, fun colors as well. And I just went over that whole square with a layer of ink. Now I'm going to go in with a slightly darker one, and I'm just going to sort of give it a shadow underneath and also sketch in sort of the perspective of the oven. And you don't have to do this, but it does just give it sort of a three-dimensional look. So I'm going to pull in some lines from the corners and sort of draw a square that's the back of my oven down there. And you can see how that gives it that perspective. And then I'm just going to darken up the sides a little bit and just enhance that perspective look a little bit. So it's not too obvious. It's very subtle, but it does kind of add a little more to this square and I colored the other one in the same way and then I'm going to take my magic picture changer dies and line them up with those pencil squares that I drew earlier and I'm going to die cut out my two pieces. So now that I have those cut I can assemble my mechanism here and for this larger piece you want to fold in those long tabs on each side. And I'm just doing this very carefully because they're very long and very skinny. So I'm just going over them multiple times to kind of fold them in. And then I can reinforce that fold with my bone folder. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just easily folding it up, being very careful and kind of going slow to where I get that whole fold nice and straight. And then you're gonna fold at the top where that little slot is. So now you're gonna add some adhesive to both sides of both of those tabs. This is the 1 8 inch double-sided adhesive. So I'm adding it to the back of each of these tabs first. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to add it to the full length of the tabs on the front.
So now I can pull off that liner paper on the back side and you're just going to fold these tabs in and stick them to themselves basically and we're going to create a track for the inside part to move in. So now we can take this and we're going to add it, but I'm going to add a whole bunch of powder to it first because the more of this anti-static powder you add, the better it slides. So I just add it to both sides and you're going to slide the tab at the top into the slot, line it up between those two tracks that we made basically. And then you're going to want to take these little pieces that are loose and you're going to take that little point and you're going to weave it into the slots on the piece on the back. So one, two, three, and there are four of those. So make sure it's kind of pushed down so that you're not having to bend your pieces too much and it should all line up perfectly. So you can see that it's going to slide in there now. It's kind of going to move a little bit until we get this nice and closed. But now that it's all woven together, I'm going to add some more powder because like I said, the more powder you add, the better it slides. And then I can take off the liner paper on this other piece that's on the other side of the tabs and I'm going to close the pocket and close that piece that moves inside. So now you have your magic picture changer mechanism all put together and you can see how those cookies go from unbaked little cookie dough blobs to some baked brown cookies. So now to talk about the pieces of the magic picture changer of an add-on. So I've cut the normal add-on piece which is just this rectangular square to show you. This cuts two long rectangles for the top and the bottom of the oven. It cuts a frame to frame up the window of the oven. It also cuts some pieces for handles for the drawer that's at the bottom and the oven door. There's a guy that cuts this cute little spoon and spatula that I just think is adorable. There's a pan, a pot, and a lid. There's this super cute little pot holder that has some beautiful little stitching details that I just think is so adorable. There's a die that will cut out some circles with a slit to look like the knobs. There's this other little detail piece as well. And then there's a die that will cut out the little burners to go on top of the stove. So I'm using a piece of mermaid cardstock cut with the Magic Picture Changer add-on and then I'm going to add the oven add-on pieces to it. So I'm just layering these rectangular pieces that the oven add-on cuts. They're cut from some peacock cardstock I'm making a teal oven because that seems very festive. I'm adding one to the top, one to the bottom, and then I cut the frame out of that same peacock cardstock and I'm adding that around the window. So I've cut this little decorative piece out of some rainforest cardstock. I'm going to add that to the center of the top. And then I'm going to add my knobs, which I cut my knobs from some of the new silver metallic cardstock, which gives them a little shine, which I just think is so much fun. It looks like chrome. So this is a very retro looking oven. And then I'm also going to add one to the center as well. So this really thin piece I've cut from some silver glitter cardstock. This is going to go right above the window and this is the handle to open the door of the oven. And then I also cut that larger handle piece, that other long piece, and it's going to go on the bottom. I've cut the little burners here from some black glitter cardstock and I've just put a little bit of glue on the bottom and I'm going to 
glue those to the back and I'm making sure that they are to the far left and the far right because you want to make sure that you've got room for the pull tab of the magic picture changer to fit between them. So you could also wait till you got this all assembled to put those there if you just want to be sure that you're out of the way. So here's that other handle that's a little bit thicker and that's going to be the handle for the drawer on the bottom where you keep all your pots and pans. And then I'm going to hang some of these little details on the knob. So I'm going to hang this little pot holder like it's hanging off the knob of the oven. I'm adding a little foam square so it kind of gives it some dimension. And then on the other side, I'm going to take that little spatula and little spoon, which I actually cut from the silver shimmer cardstock. So I've got metallic cardstock, shimmer cardstock, and glitter cardstock all on this oven. And I'm just making it look like they're hanging from the knobs as well, just for some added interest and added detail to my little scene that I'm creating. Now I can add this decorative panel to the front and I wanna make sure my adhesive is in the right place. So I want it to go from corner to corner and then along the two short sides. This is the placement of the adhesive to make sure that your magic picture changer moves. When you put the adhesive on the long sides, it can get in the way of the moving parts of the mechanism. So this is where you want to put your adhesive along the two short sides and then from the inside corner to the outside corner. And then now I can just peel off that liner paper on all those little strips of adhesive and I'm going to line that up with my magic picture changer mechanism that I created earlier. So now we have this cute oven where the picture changes and the cookies get baked. I've cut the little tab that goes at the top to tell you to pull out of some guava card stock. And I'm just using liquid glue to make sure it's nice and adhered to the top. So you just want to fold that over the top of this tab. And then to make that arrow stand out, I also cut that little arrow from some of that rainforest cardstock so it matches the dark color on my oven. And I'm just going to drop that in the hole so you know to pull that tab. So for the sentiment, I'm using the sentiment that says, let's bake the world a better place. And I've stamped it on some narwhal cardstock that's going to be the floor of my kitchen here. And then I just used a simple stitch heel side to cut that. And then I decided that the baked cookies needed a little bit more. So I'm adding the little steam lines. And I'm actually stamping them twice and kind of stacking them for a little extra steam. I wanted them to kind of cross over the line of the pan and one stamp didn't quite do it so I added two. And now I'm going to layer that piece that's the floor of my kitchen here on the bottom of a cream colored cardstock base. I'm adding some foam tape to the back of my oven so that it's popped up off the base a little bit so that you can get a hold of the tab much easier. And then now I'm going to add the little pots and or the pot in the pan rather that I cut out earlier. So there's a pot and a pan and a lid. So I'm adding some foam to the back of them so that they are at the same dimension as the oven since I put foam on the oven. And I'm just going to set these and be very careful to make sure I get it out of the way of my tab. So I'm just adjusting it to make sure that tab still has room to pull. And then I'm going to do the same with the pan. And I'm actually going to put the lid on the pan. So I'm putting a little bit of glue on the bottom of the lid. And I'm just going to layer the pan on top of it. Add a little bit of foam tape to the back of my pan and just put it on that burner on the right side. And then finally to finish it off, I'm adding my little mice at the bottom 
who are baking the cookies. They're waiting for the oven to get done. And I just wanted to add a little more of that pink, that guava in there. So I took the tiny heart stamp that's in this set and I'm just stamping a few little hearts above my mice. They're really happy about the cookies about to come out of the oven. So here is that finished card where the cookies get baked. So they go from their little balls of cookie dough to some yummy baked cookies. Now let's take a look at some examples from the design team. I really love Elisa's slimline card that she created and I love how she used Quinn's ABCs to add that big sentiment in the middle with the word whisk. It's just too cute. Megan also made a slimline card combining baked with love and sweet Christmas with those cute little mice. And I just love that little mouse peeping over the top of that gingerbread house. It's so sweet. Kainea made this really sweet card, and I love how she used the scripty sweet sentiment, and it looks like it has icing on it. That is just so cool. I love this card so much. Audrey made this super sweet card. I love the speech bubble background and how it frames up the sentiment. I also love that striped base and that subtle ink blending in the background. Elena used the four square portrait die to create four little scenes, and I just love that stack of bowls on that fourth little panel. It's just adorable. Grace's Magic Picture Changer oven is just too sweet. I love how she filled the scene with all those little goodies and elements, and I also love that little mouse hanging upside down watching the bread and cookies bake. I love Lynette's card and how she used pattern paper for her background and her frame and created these super sweet scenes with those mice baking all those yummy goodies. Letitia's card is so beautiful. I love those sparkly, colorful snowflakes that she created using the Snowflake Trio stencil. And I love how they frame up those cute little mice. Tammy's slimline card pairs a baked with love with a creature with stirring for an adorable little scene. And I love her use of Oliver's ABCs for this sentiment. And I love how she substituted the whisk for the eye. I just think that is so cute. Marine's Oven Magic Picture Changer is a Thanksgiving themed one, which is super fun. And I love those mice with their little pilgrim hats baking that pumpkin pie. And finally, Renata's card is super sweet. I love how she used the window and you open up the card to the scene on the inside with those mice baking all those goodies. Thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.